This is Mission Spotlight reporting from the heart of the vast Brazilian jungle. A success story has been in the making here for the past decade. Some years ago, an agricultural industrial school was envisioned by Bob Hobbenick a man who sensed the need to train Brazilian youth in vocations and agriculture. In the mid-1960s, Habenick finalized arrangements with the government for the Seventh-day Adventist Church to accept 6,000 acres of land. There was no money, but Bob mortgaged his car, moved his family to the jungle, carved away at the trees, and devised ways to fulfill his conviction. Habenick's dream was contagious. Others began to volunteer help. Soon shelters were taking shape from the virgin forests. At this time, Marvin and Phyllis Glantz were living on a farm in Wyoming. The call to Brazil to grow food challenged them. In the heart of the Amazon jungle, Marvin discovered that clearing the land, piping water from the river, and analyzing the soil was a monumental undertaking. There were no funds for a greenhouse. A crude shelter, a hand-watering can, and prayer nurtured the first seedlings. Finally, the day came when Glantz began to market produce in the Amazon river port of Manaus, 40 miles away. But the real solution to production was controlled conditions under shelter. Yield was 20 times greater when the plants were protected from the heavy rains. With shelters enough to care for the immediate needs and food production a reality, the aim of starting the project was in sight. In 1967, 11 students enrolled for classes. The developing years were tough and trying, but the need for this school was very evident. By 1974, there were 124 students. Scores more had been refused admittance. There was no more room. That year, a portion of the 13th Sabbath offering was designated for the development of this school. Sabbath school members responded. Over $100,000 was provided. With this initial investment by the church, the German and Dutch governments added another 300,000. Mission Spotlight now shows the fantastic growth in the past five years. In 1974, Marvin stood in front of one of his greenhouses. Each house, he said, costs about $1,000. But each will bring a gross return of more than that amount each year. Longingly, he expressed hope to add more greenhouses. An aerial view of the school today shows 99 greenhouses in perfect formation. Production has soared to 190 tons of tomatoes. The 100th greenhouse, says Marvin, is the church. The student body has increased to 240. For years, students provided their own hammocks. Clothes hung from the rafters or were kept in a box. New dormitories with simple, neat furnishings meet the dreams of the youth today. Material used for the roof of the original dining shelter usually lasts three or four years. After eight years of use, it was impossible to eat in the shelter during torrential rains. New dining hall includes a stainless steel deck for cafeteria service, tile floor and walls, beautiful tables and chairs, and kitchen equipment that makes food preparation a joy. The river flowing through the property has served as the laundromat. Of course, most girls attending this school do not know that there is any other way to launder clothes. But a laundry building is part of the master plan. 
As final construction is completed, equipment will be installed and a new phase of training for the girls will begin. A dam is scheduled for completion in 1979. It will provide power for the school instead of the old diesel generator that is about to give out. The local government has shown a keen interest in the development of the agriculture program. Officials often bring important visitors to the school to show what is being done in food production for the people of the interior. The agriculture director of the Free Zone Administration says Glantz has revolutionized the entire agriculture program of the Amazonas Territory. Because cucumbers and tomatoes require special growing conditions, the greenhouses are used for these vegetables. One or two students are assigned to each house, and it is their total responsibility to continuously care for that greenhouse. The work involved from seedling to market can hardly be comprehended. Periodically, the fungus which grows on the plastic must be carefully washed off. After a crop is harvested and there is no more yield, a house must be set up anew. The soil is fumigated and fertilized. Seedlings are transplanted into boxes. Each day they must be carefully watered and tended. Then, as the plants grow and begin to develop, the vines are anchored to strings to help to support the weight. Insect and disease control require constant attention. Tomatoes are picked when they first begin to turn color. By the time they reach the market, they will be ripe. The boxes of tomatoes are hauled from the greenhouses to a central sorting shed. Here, a careful record of each house is maintained. Students are keenly aware of the importance of their greenhouse production. Manaus merchants look to the school as their supplier for fresh vegetables. Glantz says his current price for tomatoes is 40 cents a pound. Local residents are glad to have locally grown produce available at the market. An administration building, six classrooms, and a library will soon be completed. These, together with the dormitories, dining hall, church, industrial buildings, and greenhouses, provide the physical needs for the school plant. It is significant to note that the woodwork shop has made all of the window frames, doors, cabinets, and much of the furniture for the buildings. Another great contribution has been made to this school during the heat of construction and development. Besides teaching industrial arts, Tom Larson does all the maintenance and equipment repair. Tom and Jean are from Northern California. They served two years on one of the Amazon Luzeros. Then, three years ago, they joined the school staff. The service given to this school by the Glances and Larsons cannot be enumerated. Both ladies are registered nurses. Both are called upon to go far beyond the call of ordinary duty. You may ask, what urges men and women to become so involved? It is the same drive that caused Leo and Jesse Hallowell to pioneer with a message along the mighty Amazon River. Fifty years ago, the only Seventh-day Adventists in all the great Amazon Valley were two co-porters making their way in faith along the lonely river banks, forever fighting the dreaded malaria fever. Today, pilot Dan Walters looks down from the amphibian mission plane. He sees medical boats, co-porter boats, churches, campsites, schools, branch Sabbath school sites, Adventist homes and mission posts, tributes to the two individuals who discovered their aim and goal in life and lost themselves in the joy of fulfilling it. Marion Ermsharm is the daughter of Leo and Jesse Halliwell. 
Two years ago, she and her husband, Dr. Raymond Ermshire, opened the first Seventh-day Adventist medical work in the city of Manaus. Marion says, It's a thrill to be back and have a part in starting the medical work in the place where my folks started the first church. The words of the song sung by the choir at the Amazon Agriculture School summarizes this report so beautifully. Gloria, Gloria. This truth goes marching on. This is Mission Spotlight.